Okay, let's get this thing kicked off. So thank you everyone for joining us. I'm really looking forward to this session today. Uh, we've got two great speakers. We have Scott Glenn from the Home Depot and we have Craig Greenberg from Gatekeeper Systems. And Home Depot has been working for a while with Gatekeeper Systems on this really unique solution that's really bringing just great results. Um, and we've got some awesome video to show you that's gonna kind of show you how this works a little bit, but then we're gonna have a session with Craig and Scott. And then at the end, we're gonna open it up for Q&A. So please use your chat, I'm sorry, not the chat, the Q&A to submit your questions. And we'll get to those, we have plenty of time at the end of the webinar to get to every question. Um, if we can't get to every question, we will certainly take your questions and then send them out later. Um, but with that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Gatekeeper, who's going to sort of control this first video that we're going to show. Thank you for joining us today. Really Thanks, appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you having us. Yeah, looking forward to the uh, looking forward to the discussion. Why don't we uh, Why don't we get started? You know, maybe you could uh, just talk briefly about uh, Home Depot and your current AP strategy and the areas of focus for your team. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that. Um, look, I, I would start off with saying that um, I don't know that we're terribly different from from most of the other big retailers out there. Um, but, you know, the way we kind of position certain things uh, may be a little bit different or the way we prioritize certain things may be a little bit different. But, you know, let me just kind of walk through it. You know, for the most part, our first strategic priority is to be very passionate about the way we protect our customers and our associates as they shop with us. Right. So that used to be very much four wall centric inside the store. How do we make sure that we keep people safe? But more and more, that's becoming outside the walls. That's becoming more environmental. You know, the surrounding areas, the parking lots, the surrounding uh, marketplace around your store. So that's that's certainly you know our first challenge and our first priority is to continue to try to keep those those customers and associates safe every day. Um, next, I would talk about what we call hardening the environment. Right. So how do we just make it? more difficult for bad actors to take advantage within within our environments and obviously that's becoming more difficult and more relevant than it's been in the past um, because you know it's not just protecting a product inside the store it's not just protecting the perimeter of the building it's protecting that larger environment at home depot we have you know day laborers we have transients we have homeless opportunities all around some of our stores and that more and more is falling on us to make sure that our associates and customers are protected, but also the brand is protected um, and making sure that people feel comfortable coming into our environment. So that would be number two. And then what I would say, last but not least, um, you know, we are proponents of the total retail loss uh, you know, method. Um, we are obviously charged with dealing with shrink and, and mitigating shrink in our stores, but also broader profit erosion and margin erosion opportunities, you know, everything from, you know, revenue, protecting revenue, protecting margins, protecting profitability, all the different lines of the P&L increasingly are becoming part of our priorities and um, and certainly something that uh, we're taking on pretty zealously. So that's it in a nutshell. Excellent. Yeah, it's, boy, safety has really become, you know, it's interesting as we got started, Gatekeeper got started in, in you know, the solution, you know, gosh, back in 07, 
it was really about protecting the merchandise. And as you just articulated more and more of our retail partners, you being primary, um, it's really about safety of associates and customers and we want to protect the product, right? It's really become, yeah, it's important and we want to stop the repeat offenders and the people costing us the most money collectively. However, the safety has become, become paramount. Um, right. if, if, you, if you could, could you talk a little bit about how the you know, kind of solution fits in to your, what, what's become a non-confrontational approach as we, you know, as we look at safety, obviously that's, that's key is, is avoiding that initial confrontation that can escalate so quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so look, what I love about the solution, and this is something that we have really leaned into and doubled down on over the last couple of years, is going after things that are dual purpose, uh, dual purpose technologies, as I like to call them. And it's one of the things that helps us sell investment to our leadership team. And and so there's a few of them out there, but certainly, you know, per check is is one of the more tested um it, it obviously helps on the theft and fraud side right it, it does its job it's been very effective for us um but it's also been really really good about taking our associates out of the equation um yep. we have really passionate associates they we have associates that are 25 30 35 years that are working in our stores and they take things personally sometimes and it's hard to kind of make sure that you know we keep them from engaging um, and, and we, we worry about that and we train on that and we do a lot of it, but the solution actually helps us take them out of that, take them out of harm's way. Um, and so, you know, rollouts have been a problem in our environment for a long, long time. We have a lot of different holes in our building. Some of our stores have six, seven, eight different egress, ingress points, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the configuration. And so, you know, it, it, this, this kind of just covers that for us. It takes a piece of it out of play. And again, it's it's provided real value in terms of the the shrink components of it, but it's also just taken a lot of our associates out of the the equation and out of harm's way, and so they're not having to engage with these bad actors like they used to. Yeah, that well, that's you know that's that's great to hear. That's always been something that we've been focused on is you know with the solution is that call it behavior based aspect of what you know what somebody what the cart does, not necessarily the person taking that human lens out of you know the decision right so we avoid bad decisions if we will because you know as you talked about right employees are passionate and they don't want to see you know this is their livelihood they don't want to see that rolling out the door they don't want to see theft but giving you know giving them a mechanism that stops the merchandise that draws pause you know is has been really i think powerful for some one of the things that i didn't appreciate is as we were visiting stores one of the comments that was made was how happy people were at the solution because they actually felt empowered. They were becoming, you know, pretty, pretty upset about just watching stuff go out every day and, and with the hands off policy. But now they have a tool, right, that helps keep the merchandise, but also keep them out of, out of harm's way. And I think it's gone a, a good bit for morale for some That's of the stores that had higher, higher loss problems, if you will. You yeah, know, you know, when when you're looking at these things, you, you know, there's so many factors that you have to have to consider. Obviously, when you're looking at a solution, from you know, obviously its effectiveness, its scalability, and you know, a lot of different factors. But you know, clearly, you're the one that has to walk into the boardroom and, and ask for money. What what are some of the things that that you look at? What are some of the key factors that influence your decision? Um, you know, to deploy an approach like this. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, you know, what what I would say is, you know, I've been here for almost six years uh, now, and um, you know, I I break that into the pre-COVID and the post-COVID years. Yeah. Um, that's that's really Good the point. way. And so, you know, pre-COVID, relatively new, big organization, different kind of than what I've been used to in, in the home improvement field versus discount and department stores in my in my prior life. And so for us, it was a lot about just learning what we've done and learning what we haven't done um, in the past. And so, you know, as we're kind of whiteboarding uh, the things that we do, we always start with, um, you know, what are we trying to do here? What is the outcome? And what, what, what could we do that could be disruptive or different or, you know, something that the, the grizzled Home Depot customer hasn't seen before? And, and so as we're kind of listing out solutions and matching them to outcomes, 
this was one of the ones that we said, look, it's been very, you know, effective in other, you know, verticals of the business. Um, could it work in our space? And, and we were at a point where we were literally open to trying anything to go after and bend the curb down uh, on our shrink trajectory. And so, you know, pre-COVID, we, we were throwing a lot of things out there and we said, you know, this is something we want to try. And, you know, the one thing, you know, that Home Depot is relatively known for is, uh, you know, POCing things to death, um, being very methodical and very ROIC focused. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of those factors came into it, but I think one of the biggest ones that ultimately, you know, got us out there is it's just new. It's something that we hadn't really done before. And it's something that we were trying to say in our arsenal of things that we're trying to put together, um, could it have a place? And and it does, and it ultimately did. So that's kind of how we went about looking at it. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was interesting and, and quite frankly, almost a little bit intimidating for us as you highlighted right we've had great success in some of the other verticals if you will in retail and as we you know started talking to you and looked at a, a larger poc and and you know your stores as you as you highlighted earlier right the number of entry exit points and uh fire exit doors and just all of the the variations of how people could actually escape with product and then you know the diversity if you will of your checkouts from self-check to service counters to to pro counters for your contractors and things like that. It was like, it was, when we looked at it, it was, it was a bit intimidating, quite frankly. And, you know, we've, we felt really strong over the years about, you know, our ease of implementation and being able to, being able to, you know, get a solution in, whether it be a retrofit or a new store or a remodel, equip the carts, equip the, um, you know, the variations and point of sale types. And obviously the key being, um, to keep it uh, to keep it automated and that you know the system just acts based on behavior and there isn't really um, a manual employee step that's needed to either authorize or not authorize a card. It was just based on whatever the red shopper or green shopper did from a behavior standpoint. And we quite frankly, we had some concerns, right? As we looked at as we looked at Home Depot and and you know it was a great opportunity, which we're we're so grateful to be partnered with you. But you know, you have a unique shopping environment. And I, I have to tell you, the first time I stood at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning and one of your front ends and saw the onflux of contractors and what I could only call the chaos of that front end versus a normal, call it supermarket environment with the cattle shoot checkouts or a self-check. It was like, wow, this is this is going to be a challenge. But I think I think we were able to collectively to understand, you know, what does this look like? Do the POC as you're aware and and come up with something that worked for you know your caught caught thieves eliminated confrontation you know gave a seamless shopping experience to your to your good shoppers if you will your green shoppers and and also really helped out the associates from a confrontation standpoint so you know i think it i think training at once we got going was a really really key part of that with your people making sure that you know we had a, a scalable training model and that everybody understood how to work with the system in terms of their daily flow on the front end and at all the various points of sale, you know, to deliver that shopping experience that Home Depot's become known for, but still stop the bad actors. And, and you know, I think that's an ongoing process, quite frankly, right? There's, you know, going to be training that's ongoing with this, but I think we overall collectively work together, you know, your, your folks put together training materials with my team. And I think it was a really good process for us collectively and it's been very effective. Agreed. Yep. Excellent. So, so as we, you know, as we kind of look forward now, you know, we we have a pretty good sized program now. I mean, you know, what was the expected impact and outcomes and, you know, what's your read so far based on what we've done? What are you, what are you seeing and feeling? Yeah. So look, um, you know, mentioned it a little bit earlier, we're, um, we're a very financially well-measured organization when it comes to when we, how we invest our money and the fact that we're investing, you know, frankly, millions of dollars into, into this, this system, mm -hmm. um, speaks highly of what we think the results are doing for us. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so obviously we wouldn't continue to do that if we're not seeing both, both elements, right. The, the safety of our associates and customers being affected, but also the profitability side being effective and just kind of like, a you know, I'll just give you a kind of a story about, you know, how we measure more of the softer things and, and maybe even gets into a little bit of the associate 
uh, you know, adoption and, and, you know, management of it. But, you know, I remember, and I know you've seen this video, but early in our rollout process in our POC stores, um, our district AP manager was very close to it, managing, um, you know, the, the implementation, making sure that we can work out all the bugs. And uh, I just remember that um, I got a video showed up in my email one day from him. And it was, you know, just a store, a prolific ORC rollout booster uh, kind of individual. And I'm looking at it and I watch the system, you know, work the way it's supposed to be working. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's really cool. And they're like, no, no, watch till the end. And so we had one video of the, the cart, you know, being stopped and the person abandoning the cart and leaving. And he was clearly kind of like, you know, flummoxed a little bit, you know, he's mm -hmm. like, what, what's happening? Something's new is happening here. This is not, you know, what I'm used to being able to do. But the cooler part of that was, when they cut to another camera and it's the associates who are kind of laughing and high-fiving one another and saying holy crap this thing really works and this is yeah. this is definitely going to be something there but i look at it and i go wow that's that's actually a different behavior than what our associates used to do which was often put themselves in front of that cart and trying to physically stop that cart from leaving the building which led to some of those confrontations and people having to do things that they didn't normally have to do and i just i just thought it was very symptomatic of kind of like what we were looking for and the results we were trying to get to and you know obviously that just happens day in day out now in our stores and we certainly will continue to you know look at that and continuing to figure out and we're working with you guys as you know you know hand mm -hmm. in hand say you know it works really, really well on our shopping carts. We also have different carts for bulk purchases and, and right. you know, lumber and for different things. And we'll continue to try to figure out how do we get better and how do we continue to evolve the system. And you guys have been great in helping us do that. But, you know, we're very pleased with um, the system. We're very pleased with what it's been returning from us or for us. And, you know, like anything, it's just part of the compression, you know, it's, it's the menu of options that we apply to, um, you know, our shrink and safety equation in our stores. Yeah, no, I agree. I'll, I'll tell you the, the videos and, you know, Gatekeeper right now, we see roughly about 40,000 events a day coming into the team globally. And I will tell you, I've been doing this for, for 20 years now never gets old when you see merchandise from whatever retailer stopped nobody hurt bad guy or gal walks away store team pulls the cart back in everybody goes back to work and we avoided a loss we avoided somebody getting hurt we avoided any type of incident or issue you know uh, that just you know that's that's one of the things i I just uh, hasn't gotten old in all these years. And I love, I love seeing that. Cause I think it's, I think it's really what we need at this moment in time is stop, stop the theft, but yeah. let's take that human lens and the confrontation out of it because we never want to lose somebody over a, over a bottle of Tide or a, or, or power tools for God's sake. It's just not, not worthwhile. That's right. So, you know, as we, as we look at, you know, and I appreciate all your feedback on our solution and our partnership and our, our ongoing collaboration as you said to continue to evolve the solution and look at how it fits in your stores and some of the various modes of of checkout and some of your perimeter departments is all you know great steps moving forward but you know in general as as you look at ORC you're very active uh both you know with uh, uh governmental and and in the media at times I think you've been a real advocate for getting the problem out there and letting people know hey we're taking action and we also need support from our government and legislators and all the supporting bodies in our organization um you know in your in your mind what what can the industry do what can we all do to further pact or impact ORC and make a make a larger impact in in this ongoing problem that we collectively face yeah, no, great question. Um, you know, what I would what I would say is we have we've been on a a roller coaster ride in retail, you know, oh, certainly over my career. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times earlier in my career when theft and fraud was more impactful to, you know, the shrink equation and and the profitability of the stores. There were times we didn't really think a whole lot about, you know, the life safety equation. Um, and then there were times when theft and fraud was really not the major, you know, component we were 
in a place of operational dysfunction in the industry. There's a lot of disruption going on. Online was coming on there. So the, the complexity of, you know, e-commerce and brick and mortar and delivery and all the different options that come along with it. But I think, you know, the last five years, the COVID years have kind of brought us full circle back a little bit to uh -huh. where ORC is clearly something that needs to be reckoned with. Um, I think that there's a perfect storm of decriminalization that's happened out there under resourcing of police officers that have emboldened the bad guys and girls um, that um, are just willing to do things that maybe they haven't done in the past. You know, I always tell our leadership that, you know, there was a day back when I started in this business, um, you know, when I would apprehend a shoplifter in stores, there was shame to it. There's no shame yeah. anymore. There's, there's no, there's nobody really that really cares about it. It's they're willing to hurt people um, in order to achieve whatever they want to do. And so I say all that to say um, we've got to educate the, the, the governments out there. Um, we've got to do a better job in, in continuing to help them understand how big this problem is um, and, and what their obligation is <clears throat> within, within this space. And so, you know, that's the, the path that we've started to take. You know, I've been, you know, blessed by having a leadership team that gets the message, um, that has been vocal about the message, that has supported us to go out and be aggressive in, in talking to state, you know, local state and federal leadership, um, and, and really kind of push the message on, we need to change the way we're operating as it relates. And, you know, I don't think any of the, for the most part, I don't think most of our leadership in the government and out there really just looks at it and says, oh, it's not a big deal anymore. I think they've been educated, but that education took some time. And I think people yeah. are starting to understand the broader impact of how it affects the community, how it affects the ability for us to provide jobs, how it affects the ability for, you know, people to be served in their communities. And, you know, if nothing else, how it affects their ability to raise taxes and do the things that they need to do when businesses can't afford to stay, um, you know, in, in, in business. And so I think there's um, been progress in education. I don't think we're done. You know, my ask would be for all of, all of the retail to continue to engage their GR and PR partners uh, internally within their companies. There's some companies that are really, really good at it and are, are you know, side by side with us when we talk to legislators and, and law enforcement. There's other companies that can probably do more and have a bigger voice that could be, um, could be heard. And that the more we magnify and amplify that, message, the more we're going to get traction as an industry. So that'd be my kind of like, you know, ask for the for the broader community. Yeah, I know all all really good points. I mean, I, you know, from from my perspective, I, as a solution provider, you know, I came out of retail operations and similar to you, when I was in retail operations, if there was an engagement, or if you will, a catch, which was what we used to do with shoplifters, there was a stigma um, uh, involved with that, to your point, a shame involved with that that just doesn't seem to exist today. And I think that with some of the things that you talked about and, uh, you know, decriminalization or higher thresholds, if you will, in conjunction with all these e-fencing options that people have utilized to sell merchandise versus having to go into some CD back room someplace and physically sell a piece of merchandise for money or whatever they were trading the merchandise for has really changed things. But I, I agree with you that we are making good progress and we just need to keep our foot on the gas, engaging government, engaging any partners we can, working collectively together, not, you know, and I, I value this part of our industry, I think in the loss prevention space, Yes, I'm a solution provider, you're a retailer, but I think the partnerships that we have collectively versus just transactional for a particular solution like per check or whatever it may be has really changed to where we're innovating and out in the forefront of how we collectively impact this problem. And I, you know, I certainly see that continuing and also these relationships getting stronger and deeper as we all look to harden the target and make sure that we're, you know, we're maximizing sales, minimizing loss, but most importantly, keeping everybody safe, right? I think okay. that's that's in the end what we what we all are charged to do with our, our collective jobs. So couldn't agree more. Good, good stuff. Any uh you know, any any closing comments from you as we as we look to wrap this up again? I really, really appreciate your time and talking about this today. You've been such a fantastic partner and are such an advocate in the in the industry for for all things reducing loss and increasing safety. I just really appreciate your time. 
No, I'd look, I, I just, I would, I would just close with, uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity to um, talk to the broader group. Um, certainly, if anybody has any questions about how we've gone about the implementation process, how we've gone about the return on investment calculation process, uh, be certainly open and willing to talk to any of my peers and partners out there and, uh, you know, help out wherever we can. So appreciate the time. You bet. Hey, Scott, thank you very much. I'll, I'll echo that. Any further questions or you know, want to talk a little bit deeper about how Gatekeeper and Percheck Solution can help you out in, in your particular retail vertical or group of stores. We're always happy to engage, uh, easy to find. And, and again, we value being an industry partner with all our, our retail partners. Um, so thanks again, Scott. At this point, I'll turn it back over to you. That was a great high five at the end of that video. I hope everybody caught that. That was pretty exciting stuff. Great, great snippets. I love watching the bad guys with their frowny faces when their uh, their tricks don't work, which is fantastic. So we do have some questions that have come in for you guys. I hope you're, you're ready to be in the hot seat now. Um, for starters, and maybe I'll, I'll kick this over to Craig first. It looks like magic. Right, like how how does this system work? Can you kind of, without revealing the secret sauce, maybe tell us a little bit about the ways that it works? Sure. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Stephanie. You know, we we equip uh, the shopping carts and or other rolling stock that's appropriate. Obviously, in the Home Depot environment, there's you know there's flat carts and other other types of rolling stock with uh, uh, gatekeeper equipment, and we install it, if you will, a network of sensors at the uh, at the checkouts and the doorways. And you know it's all invisible to the to the good shopper, if you will, the green shopper. And if you know the behavior of um, an individual comes in the store, utilizes a card or flat card or whatever it may be, and departs without you know getting a what you call a permission from a point of sale, an active point of sale, uh, it would disable at the doorway and set off an alarm, trigger a video, and so on. And and which essentially what you just saw in the video, right? It automatically disables it. And the nice part is it's it's um, independent of who's pushing it or what's in it. So you know, in a Home Depot environment, it could be you know a box of screws or it could be thousands of dollars worth of tools. It's really irrelevant. It's about the behavior, not not the person or the merchandise. Um, so you know, actually relatively simple, but also very effective. So I know many years ago, back when I was an LP, uh, we had a solution that would lock, but it was kind of easily defeated. Have you guys kind of done a workaround with that to, to where that this thing is, you know, can't be tied up or can't be, you know, it's still pushed out? Yeah, I think I think for the most part, I mean, it's you know, like I said, it's all automated. All the you know breaking mechanisms and things like that are all internal to the solution, so it's not something that can be defeated with you know like tying it up or or doing something like that. Um, you know, the the only way really is if they you know we get them down to something that's on their person versus using a cart, which I look at and I'd be interested in Scott's thought. I kind of look at that as a win if they got one thing instead of twenty. Obviously, but from a defeat standpoint, no, it's 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 pretty hard to defeat. Excellent. So yeah, I mean, I would I would just layer layer in on that. Like, I mean, part of our strategy was if we can get these folks to trade down a cart full of merchandise versus grabbing one and running it and running away, um, we'd consider that a win. Um, you know, and so not only have we seen that, but we do see just generally abandonment um, is probably 90 plus percent of the time. They're not even grabbing one item and walking out the door with it. Right. Yeah. And so I don't know if you can talk about it, Scott, but what, what is the protocol at the Home Depot? Would you then investigate that drop? Like, let's say they walk, they their cart is locked and they can't get out with it. Do you pull video? How do you handle that? 
Yeah, so I think I mentioned, you know, a little bit earlier that, um, you know, this is a piece of the compression strategy that we use. Obviously, smart analytics, smart video systems, um, you know, we are using LPR and other, you know, um, uh, I'll call it technology enabled cameras that are out there. And so really what, what happens in these incidents is they are pulled back. They are kind of looked at for commonalities. Is this somebody we've seen before? Is this somebody we've seen, you know, can we walk, follow the person out to the vehicle? Can we use our license plate recognition systems to then tie them to other broader crimes that are out there? And so, yeah, our, our teams behind the scenes will continue to uh, pull the string on these incidents so that they just don't become a continual test. They become something that we can build up and then actually take to prosecution uh, down the down the road. Right, because as you know, the, the bad guys, if they continue to do this as a test and there's no action, then they'll probably find a way <laughs> to make it work eventually. They, they don't they don't have a lot of quit in them. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. it's called job security for us, I That's guess. Right. <laughs> so yeah. another question that came in is how does this affect the customer experience? Can you talk about that, Scott? Yeah, um, you know, what, what I would say, and kudos to to Craig and Paul and the team, um, you know, we don't get a lot of false alarms, um, you know, again, without getting a whole lot into the, the secret sauce and behind the scenes technology that goes into it, um, it, it does have to communicate with legitimate point of sale. Um, there has to be transactional, um, you know, tie to it. And so, you know, for the most part, we're not really experiencing customer interactions. Every once in a while, sure. That do we have you know faux pas, but what I would tell you is specifically with this, but even broader than this, the customers have become really, really resilient to understanding what retailers are doing these days. They get it. They know what's happening in their communities. They know what's happening with crime. They understand. You know, we we do some non technological things at the Home Depot with lockup. And while everybody thought there would be a you know customer rebellion about that, I talk to customers all the time. They say, I get it. I know why you're doing it. Just don't make me wait too long, right? I'd rather you have the product. I'd rather it be on the shelf. I'd rather be available. If I wait for a couple of minutes, that's one thing. If you make me wait too long, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit frustrated. That same attitude translates into, oh, yeah, I get it. The cart locked up. I I'm Help me, help me fix it and be, get me on my way. That's, that's the mentality we see most of the time. Yeah. I think the customers are, they're relieved that we're doing something, right? I yeah, think that they're, that's right. they're happy about it for sure. I, I, I would add to that, you know, good, great job with the Home Depot people, but you know, every now and then there's a behavior that is kind of unplanned. Somebody leaves, comes back and you could think of some various things. But when it occurs, to Scott's point, people understand there are measures in place and everybody's doing it to help manage loss, manage pricing and ensure in stock. But if an associate responds in a friendly manner, apologizes, gets them on their way quickly, you know, we have tens of thousands of these systems. We get very, very little pushback on that when it's handled properly at the point of engagement. I think that's a really important part is to, you know, keeping the customers happy with whatever solution. I don't think that's specific to Gatekeeper, by the way, as Scott said, hey, we don't mind you lock stuff up. Just don't keep me waiting too long. So when it's handled well by the store teams, typically it, it's, it's a non-issue and it, and it works well. Yeah, and I, I would I would I would go on and say we've had the system in place for years, and <clears throat> in, in you know more than half or close to half the chain at this point, I literally can think of one escalation that's been sent to our senior leadership that ultimately made it my way to answer for some kind of false alarm if you want to think about it that way. Pretty good track record. Yeah, I think as with any program, it's all about the pre work, right, and that training that yep. goes into it to set it up for success. Sure. Scott, can you, can you talk a little bit about how, how long did it take before you, your uh, store employees had adopted this? Do you feel like it was like right out of the gate, like they were instantly or did, was there a little learning curve there? Yeah, um, very fast. Um, and again, I, I think it's I think it's a little bit just because of the circumstance we've been in for a while. Um, this is a pretty common method of theft historically at the Home Depot because of what I mentioned, the multiple ingress, egress points. We've got garden centers, we've got pro areas, we've got tool rental centers, we've got front entry, we've got front exit, we've got lumber yard, lumber um, door exits. And so, you know, as we said, the, the criminals figure out a way and they've been exploiting the ways of getting product out of the store for a long, long time. 
And this was just an easy one for them. I mean, we can't put people, we can't put guards, we can't put, you know, humans necessarily at all of those um, um, points of egress 108 hours a week. And so they just, you know, they were constantly testing us. And so as, as the associates saw us doing something, they were just all in. They were just, they, they could see it from day one, stop things from happening that they always watched occur and were powerless to address. And so that's the point where, you know, you only need one win to, for them to start saying, holy crap, something's really different here and we're going to continue to embrace it. So, you know, every once in a while you get some frustration, you know, because um, they do have to, you know, actually when the carts lock up, they have to go out, they have to unlock the cart, they have to move the product, put it back on the shelf. I mean, but geez, that's, that's better than the alternative in, in, in our, on our eyes. And it seems again, without not getting into the secret sauce, but it seems to me like there's not a lot of employee involvement before the lockup, right? Like they're, they're not having to do something extra at the POS, right? Nope. Yep. Yeah. Not a thing. No, no, it's completely automated and, you know, in the end, I think the ideal outcome really is, you know, we disable whatever type of card it is and, you know, an associate responds and the perpetrator walks away. And that is absolutely ideal with no steps being required by the store associates to permiss or not permiss a cart. Awesome. So, Scott, I know, you know, typically when we have a new solution, we're going to do a POC and things like that. Can you maybe give some tips to our audience about how you then sold it to senior leadership? Did you bring them out and have them watch an example or a, do a like a show and tell in the store or what, <laughs> was it in the boardroom? How did it go? Yeah, no, we did. Right. So, um, again, typical POC, start in a couple of stores, expand to a couple of markets. I I, I would I would just, um, you know, the way we do POC things um, may or may not be different from others, but just I'll I'll speak to it. We don't rack and stack stores and go after, you know, hey, this store's got the most rollouts. Let's go after that. We go after markets. Um, we don't want transference. We don't want to stop problems in one store and create problems in another store that didn't have them previously. Um, so generally, our go to market strategy is to go attack a market, um, measure, you know, literally every particular metric that there there is out there for us to measure, whether it's sales, whether it's shrink, whether it's on hand adjustments, whether it's customer satisfaction, you name it, we're we're, we're measuring all that piece of it. But but yeah, we we did some bold things. Um, you know, we actually uh, took our leadership team, uh, including a couple members of our board, um, on a store walk, and uh, it was kind of one of those. You know, I, I held my breath a little bit. But because uh, you always want to make sure the technology works. But um, we had one of our board members um, push a loaded cart through the front door. And obviously the system worked perfectly and, and the technology worked perfectly. And, you know, it just uh, it just kind of reinforced the metrics that we were seeing that the experience was also there. Right. So, you know, people always worry about, like, does the cart lock up so abruptly that, you know, somebody could get hurt. Is there, you know, what if a kid's in the cart? And, and and the the way the the system works is it it slow rolls, right? It just it just slow rolls to a stop and it it works that way. And so there's an experiential side of it. Um, we talked to the associates. We got the, you know, the the qualitative piece point of view from from the associates and kind of what they were seeing. And, you know, we are um, you know, we didn't measure a whole lot in the pre piece of it. Like how many rollouts did you get a day? We just, we didn't track that. Um, but, you know, again, anecdotally and qualitatively, the associates are telling us that they're just not even trying as much as they used to. So the right. effect has been to just, that behavior has moved out of our environment more and more uh, than it ever did. That's awesome. And is there something about the technology that helps you track it now? Like, like are you able to track the attempts and the lockups? We do. I, I don't know if Craig wants to talk about the technology side of it or the data side of it, but we do. Awesome. Yeah, sure. We, you know, we it, uh, do video, whether it's customers video, gatekeeper video, you know, when a card activation happens, it triggers an alert and that can trigger video. And we also have log files and it helps the retailer understand exactly what's going on. Not, not only from a loss standpoint, but, you know, a response standpoint, as we talked about, right, a fast and friendly response at the door um, usually is what gets the perpetrator to walk away. But, you know, in the event, it's, uh, you know, it's something else. 
fast and friendly response keeps everybody good. So yeah, we have a lot of ways to track it. And, you know, it's, you asked earlier and Scott mentioned, you know, one of the things we're really focusing on now with, with our partners is trying to measure the before, if you will, right. From a, from, if you will, a surveillance or monitor mode is what did the problem look like before? And then what looks, what does it look like once, once the system is activated? And, you know, Scott said, what we typically see is, you know, they they scatter pretty quickly. They go elsewhere and it isn't even that you see a great diminishment. It's like they don't even try anymore. We have a what we call the per check curve where people, you know, we see 80, 90 percent sometimes within the first two weeks. It's really, really impactful. But we do have a number of ways to measure it, both from a file standpoint and, and best option, obviously, is video because you have evidence and also understand the associate response and so on. So very important. So we, we have an interesting question here from John Sullivan, and thanks for putting us up, John. Um, and le leave it to LP people to, to think of something like this, right? But w have you had anybody trying to roll in with a like a lookalike Home Depot cart um, and trying to get around this system? Um, <laughs> I, I kind of thought uh, about this too, but, uh, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, you just put another fear in my in my I know, head, right? John. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't thought about that one, um, but um, I, honestly, I haven't heard of it. Um, you know, it is interesting because you know one of the things we deal with, like I happen to be dealing with recently, is just people coming in with the fake aprons on and and certainly doing TikTok videos and all oh, that yes, that happens out there. But but no, uh, I hadn't heard of that. Um, so, but I, I wouldn't put it past anybody. Sure, it's it's certainly there. I think. To, in all seriousness, though, I think, um, you know, what what probably um, is happening is either they are trying to like, again, we have the pro component of our business and there's a lot of, you know, situations with collusion with our associates and, and, and customers um, at times. I think I think probably we're seeing a little bit move into that arena, but also people are just, you know, more grabbing a couple of things in their arms and running out of the store versus the typical rollout that we've typically uh, seen in the past. So, right. but uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll put that on the agenda for the meeting on Monday to to have a discussion about because that's a, it's right. an interesting point of view. Yeah. Yeah. New new fear unlocked. Sorry about that. Yep. Um. Yep. Someone's just giving you kudos for having the executives go out which is great. And I hope everyone uh, at least approaches that when they have a new solution to sell. I, I think seeing is always believing for sure. Sure. Okay. Well, I think that is all the questions that are, that we've got. Um, you guys both did a great job, Scott. I know you're a super busy guy, so we appreciate you taking the time to come on yeah. and answer the questions live for us. Craig, really nice job to you and really interesting solution. Um, and we appreciate everything you're doing out there, but again, thank you both. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And if anyone, let me see if I can share my final screen here. If yeah. anybody would like to reach out to, hopefully you guys can see it, a little technical issue. Okay. Once again, Stephanie, thank you very much. Thank you very much to the, to the magazine. And uh, Scott, as always, thanks for your time. Look forward to talking to you soon. And, and thanks for everybody that made the, the time out of their busy schedules to uh, to join today. Really appreciate it. No, I appreciate everybody who's on and uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day. Oh, happy Father's Day.